What's up guys? So today I'm making good on my promise to review one of my favorite neck knives, the Cold Steel Spike. You see me wearing this thing in a lot of different videos. I've been carrying it pretty much every day since I got the thing. Um, you know, with only a few exceptions of trying some other ones. But yeah, I mean, I absolutely love it. I'm sure most of you already know that. I am uh, pretty obsessed with this knife. I carry it every day, day in and day out. It is the largest neck knife I've ever carried. All right, full four inch blade here, eight inches overall, the four inch handle. It's big. In fact, it's probably too big for a lot of people to consider as a neck knife. Now, Cold Steel probably understood this, and the holes that are in the sheath uh, are tech lock compatible. You do not get a tech lock with this when you get it, but if you, of course, wanted to carry it on a belt or use it on a strap on a bag or something like that, you would have to use a tech lock, all right? What is included with it is a ball and chain necklace. So they're selling this as a neck knife, which is pretty interesting because it is just so big. But as we know, Cold Steel, they always go big. Right, so why not have the biggest neck knife there is? Just like some of the folders they have are the biggest folders. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I like about it most. It's probably why I love it so much is because it's the most capable neck knife I've probably ever had. I'm used to one, two, and three inch bladed neck knives. Small, compact, it makes sense. It's hanging right in front of you. If it's too big, it's not gonna work out. All right, especially if you're chunky, you bend over, you got your gut in the way, you don't want your knife poking you, you know, especially when you're, you're sitting and just, a lot of different activities, you want something that's compact. Now for me, I do carry my neck knife openly, as you guys seen, a lot of people don't. A lot of people have it tucked in between two different shirts, maybe in between like a, a t-shirt and an undershirt, or sometimes they only wear them when they have a jacket on or something like that. A lot of people don't like to let it be known that they're carrying a neck knife. I can care less. Uh, everyone who knows me, places I go, stores I go, they're just used to seeing me with the neck knife. It, it's very odd, and what's interesting about this particular one is because it's so much like a knife. When I carried the uh, Leduc, people thought it was a pendant or something. They had no idea it was a knife. But when this is hanging on your chest, this is very clearly a large knife. Some people do get freaked out by it. I do get very strange looks. Occasionally I get strange questions. But at the end of the day, after I talk about it with people or after I present myself as being friendly and not a threat, then people usually don't care. Um, but yeah, I do want to point out the fact that this is the biggest neck knife I've probably ever carried. I'm pretty sure of it. So uh, this comes in a few different versions as far as styles. There's actually two main different styles. One is with this um, polymer handle. You can see it is full tang. The scales are very, very thin. And then they also have a whole series of uh, ones that just have basically a wrap on it. All right, and those are a couple bucks even cheaper. Speaking of price real quick, this thing, brand new, 25, 26, 27 dollars. That's about the range you're gonna pay. I think the highest I ever saw it was 30 bucks. So let's say 30 dollars or less. That's amazing for a very usable knife. The blade steel on this is a German Krupp steel. It's a 4116, all right? Um, I've heard people compare that to like a 428C from Buck. I would say it's more along the lines of like an AUS-8, but a little bit better, all right? It's not gonna blow you away. I can tell you in carrying this and using it so much, it does not hold an edge for that long. It is definitely on the softer side of things, but it's a finer grain steel. It's actually pretty strong for a stainless, at least a, a cheaper stainless. Uh, it is nice, even though this is made in Taiwan, it's nice to use in a German steel as opposed to a Taiwanese or Chinese steel. Um, so, you know, if that means something to you, that's, that's that. You can see on the back here it just says cold steel, made in Taiwan. And the spike on the front. So as far as uh, this particular style with these uh, polymer scales, there's this buoy style, which is basically a deep clip point, which is my favorite. I've always really been attracted to buoy or bowie, depending on how you want to say it. Um, I love that style. I love a heavy clip point. It, it allows you to have a very, very pointy tip, um, but you still get a slight belly going on here. There's also a Tanto version, which I do own, but I've never carried. All right. So you can see how they have their Tanto. And there's a third version with this particular uh, handle, and it's called their Tokyo. And it's basically like a drop point. But what's interesting is there's a swedge that starts behind the tip. So the swedge like starts here to here. So pretty interesting design. I mean, aesthetically it's different. I like kind of like it. I like to get it since I have two out of three of them. Uh, eventually I'll probably get it because they are pretty cheap. Um, but it's just interesting that the swedge isn't on the tip. Usually you see that it's basically just cut out on the back. More for aesthetics than anything, I think. Uh, maybe like a slight bit of weight reduction, but I don't think it's uh, you know really accounting for much there. Uh, but I mean, basically that's just a drop point. All right, so if you prefer a drop point over a Tanto or a Bowie or Bowie style, then of course the Tokyo may appeal to you the most. Um, 
Yeah, but the other line besides these three have the wrap on there. Again, like $23 instead of like $27. All right, so not a big price difference, but there are a couple different overall designs, some really funky ones. I like the more traditional stuff. So taking a closer look at the handle scales, you can see they are very, very thin. All right, there's a, a texture pattern on the flats, and then of course afterwards, it looks like they cut some grooves in there and smooth it out. There is a guard that flares out, all right, on both sides here, and a deep finger trowel. So you get a deep finger trowel for your pointer finger, and then this naturally acts like a thumb ramp. All right, keeps your hand from sliding up if you're doing any kind of stabbing. Uh, same thing in the reverse grip, it would keep your hand from sliding down on the blade. All right, very, very comfortable, very grippy. I love how this feels, it's just, you know, it's not too aggressive, but those flats, those grooves, or that pattern there actually does facilitate some grip there. All right, it's just really, really comfortable to use. Um, although it's a cheap knife, cheap Taiwanese made knife with a softer steel, I just love this thing. <laughs> I really do, I use it all the time. Um, I do strop it up. You can see there's a little bit of a polished edge on this, just naturally from the compound that I'm using. Um, that's how I maintain it, you know? People ask me all the time, you know, what's the best steel? You gotta get the best steel. The hardest steel is gonna stay as sharp as longest. Well, as long as you can maintain your edges, it's not that big of a deal. Of course, yeah, we want, you know, a blade that's gonna stay sharp forever. That's what most people want when you're into knives. But you can get away with having a cheaper knife as long as you maintain it. And that's why I always push stropping. Stropping takes something like this, a cheap knife, and it allows me to keep it razor sharp for a very, very long time. I don't actually have to sharpen this very often at all because of the fact that I'm constantly stropping it. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a huge tip I can give to anyone out there, especially if you're, you're using a lot of your cheaper knives with softer steels, definitely get into stropping and of course proper uh, sharpening. As far as the, uh, the weight on this, 2.3 ounces. So it is extremely light uh, for a knife of its size. However, I can tell you, I do notice it on the neck a lot more than other neck knives. So I mean, comparing this to a three inch knife overall that weighs one and a half ounces or something, Obviously, it's gonna be the, the heavy boy. It's gonna be the big boy or the heavier neck knife option. But if you're one of those guys that's gonna carry it on the waistband or something like that, then it weighs nothing. You'll literally forget about this. Having this like on the small of your back or maybe on the, uh, the off side, you know, if you carry a gun or something like that, um, you'd forget about it. It's extremely light. So overall, you guys already knew it, but I am a huge fan of this knife. And if you're looking for a very lightweight, small fixed blade, let's call it, whether it's neck carry or, you know, waist carry, I would highly, highly recommend this thing. The only suggestion is to make sure you do strop it up or you can you know, uh, sharpen your blades. But I think you'd be very happy with this. It's very, very affordable. It definitely makes itself known if you're openly carrying it around the neck. So depending on where you live or the situation, it's not always gonna call for such a large, obvious neck knife. For example, I would say funerals, maybe even weddings. I mean, you don't wanna just have this big old knife on your chest. It's just not appropriate. Uh, perhaps certain buildings, even if you're allowed knives in them, you may not want to have this exposed like that. Yeah, I guess personal preference, but also class. Like I said, I wouldn't wear this to a funeral because it's just not classy. And like I said, if you want to be a little bit more uh, covert about carrying your neck knife openly, perhaps not the best choice. Going with a minimalist or something a lot smaller might be a better option for you. So let me know your opinions down below. Of course, if you own this knife, let me know what version you have and you know how you carry it, how you use it. Uh, but for me, it's awesome. I mean, it's just, it's way more capable than most neck knives. And it's kind of hard because uh, when I am carrying this, I kind of want to go to this because it's right there. It's convenient. That's why I love neck knives so much. But more times than not, I have to literally stop myself as I'm getting my knife because I realize I'm carrying something else in the pocket that I want to actually use and eventually review. So it's, uh, it's kind of a burden to have such a fun, cool knife right on the chest there that I can't use a lot of times. So this gets more used around the house as opposed to uh, you know out and about. Because whenever I'm carrying this, I usually have other knives on me anyway, and I'm trying to purposely use those whenever I can. But anyway, that is it. That's my uh, opinions on the cold steel spike. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.